Greetings and good day to all of you. It is a pleasure to be here today to speak about the role of culture in a just society. Thank, before that, thank you so much for the TEDx uh, Somaya Vidyalaya uh, uh, for inviting me here. And I consider it as honor to address you. Well, when we talk about culture and also relating that to India, we see a very grand picture in front of us. There are many, many, uh, the, the history of India, for example, I mean, the, the recorded history of India goes back to more than 4,000 years. There is a, so a complex web of ideas, institutions. There is a complex web of, of um, uh, uh, many, many, many philosophies that have turned out in India, many religions, performances. So everything, all this makes up the, the, the idea of culture in that sense. But I would like to take, uh, I mean, that is culture with a big capital C. I'd like to come down to our level and see what is culture about. Just look at this audience, for example. You come from different social backgrounds. You speak different languages. You perhaps see the same movies and perhaps the same music, perhaps. But at home, it is different. The language that you speak, the lullabies that you may have heard, or perhaps even the, the proverbs that your mother or father may have taught you are very different. So diversity is perhaps what we are all about. We are as diverse as it gets. We have many, many ideas. We are shaped by culture. We are bound by culture. Each and every idea of us is also comes from within. So the composite of all that is what I think we would call as culture. And that has a different take on different people. And that is what impacts us in our behavior, our daily life, our, our uh, uh, respect towards the other person, everything. So we are, we are governed by culture at all levels. So this is the basic premise that I'd like to start with. I have been, I'm part now associated with a, a, a project, a cultural project called the Encyclop of, of, of an Encyclopedia of Indian Arts and Culture called Sahapedia. Saha is a word in Sanskrit that means to be together, to be bound together, to work together with. So to that extent, Sahapedia is an open online encyclopedia on the arts, cultures, and heritage of India. Open in the sense that it interacts with people, experts, or, or anybody with any, any uh, idea about arts and culture who have an expertise. We ask them to contribute if what they know towards this platform, it is a web, uh, because it's an online encyclopedia and not like a print encyclopedia, there is much more flexibility to what we can do, what we can get into this platform. So we ask people, either with written knowledge or with other kinds of knowledge, for example, a terracotta person, a painter, who may have not published an article or written a book, but has a core core contribution to make in his or her field. So if we ask such people to contribute to us, not just in terms of articles of books, because they are, they are also very important, articles and books, they can also contribute in terms of photographs, in terms of audio-video content, in terms of uh, maps, or even a recorded interview, anything that they have, an archival material. So that comes to the to the platform and we want to make it as accessible to everybody as possible. So this is one of the biggest challenges and biggest contribution that Sahapedia makes for the, makes for India and perhaps, I mean, this is what, even for a globalized India, for anyone, the information and access to access to different kinds of heritage. Now just look at the, the, the diverse cultural com complex that is India. There are so many traditions, so many uh, types of uh, literature, for example, there is literature, there is philosophy, there is uh, uh, our, what we call as a, our contribution, this India as a cultural superpower, our contribution to mathematics, to astronomy, astrology, to the, to the different scientific fields, greatly to medical heritage. We talk about Ayurveda, we talk about yoga. So it is, and it's an endless, it is a very, very, what we talk about all, we are all that, we do have all that, we have to take pride in all that, but it is not what we are, but how we take it to the next generation, how we make it more meaningful to the next generation is what matters, and this is, I think, where the power of culture is in 
for a just society. How to make it more democratic? How to make it more accessible to all people and not just make it the preserve of a few is the challenge that we have taken up and we hope that each step towards that is one is one su success story for us. This is how we want to operate. Actually, we, uh, we know that we are a small, uh, uh, small institution. We cannot do everything together. There are many, many uh, institutions who have acquired core knowledge in all these things. So we, we ally with institutions, we contact institutions who have archives and ask them to share this material. We also contact experts of different domains, different even small, small areas of scholarship and we ask them to contribute, not like I said, not just as articles but in different kinds of material. So this is perhaps a big advantage that we open it out to the world and we also share it as much, uh, take it as it comes. And every material that is in Sahapedia is not copyrighted. It can be accessed as freely as, as anybody can. So this is the core idea. And I, in, on this context, I'd like to show you some images of what we have gathered. It's very little compared to what we have gathered, but then it will show you a small example of how we have been going about it. These are just still images. We do have documented material, audio, video. We have maps. We have uh, many other kinds of material also, but this I'd like to show it to you for now. It is a self-explanatory, the title is down here. So that's it. It's a selection from what we have. What I wanted to make the point is that the ambit of what we call culture is very wide. And, and also the richness is, it, it just goes beyond our definitions of what we think of as definitions of culture. It has so many domains. It has the for what, and we also don't want to make a distinction between what is classical and what is folk. I mean, there is, these are two ends of perhaps the same, same thread of the same spectrum. This is what we wanted to show in all these pictures. The thing is that, for example, let us take the example of dance. Dance as a, as, or maybe performance. As we know, humans performed uh, all right from, from, right from the beginning of history. They performed, for example, they swayed to the wind. They imitated the movements and the sounds of, da of the movements of, uh, of the nature and also imitated the sounds of animals and birds and all that. So there is a long history of dance that we have. As it evolved, when during the agricultural practices, for example, men and women worshipped nature for different for, for uh, different forces of nature for their ends, for example, to have a good harvest or to appreciate some elements of uh, warding of e evil for warding of diseases. So this became a community engagement dance. Slowly, as it happened, as it turned out, as it evolved, um, it became more, more than a communal act, community activity, it became more of a personal activity. For example, uh, uh, people, high, people of high society, the royals or the elite, began to patronize arts. So perhaps the emphasis at this point shifted from the dance to the dancer. And people started honing their skills, the, the artists started honing their skills to suit a big audience, saying that, I mean, and uh, so they start sharpened their skills and it became more and more personalized in that sense. And aesthetics also, did many kinds of theories of aesthetics also developed by and by. So in a way, if I take an example from the form that I know and I have studied Kathakali, Kathakali is an art form that may have evolved sometime around the 17th century. But 
as an art form we call it a classical dance i mean it is also described as one of the classical dances of india but how it evolved it has taken elements from a very vibrant folk and existing other traditions it has taken for example its make up from the theyam from the folk tradition of theyam music from the existing sopana style of style of singing and perhaps the the vibrant facial expressions and uh, and and the uh, and that power from the the theater form of kodiyattam so in a way it synthesized all these elements and made it a much more spectacular and a narrative kind of dance so i am what i'm saying is everything has a, works in a state of complementarity and give and take and there is nothing that is exists on its own as classical so we don't get into that kind of the, the that kind of divisions i would binaries i would say now before this i was i had the opportunity to work in the national mission for manuscripts which actually was a great experience for me because in manuscripts is what we have all the storehouse of knowledge that we call uh, the intellectual traditions of india whatever i said about the mathematics the there is no no knowledge that is not that india did not produce right from like i am very happy to say from aesthetics to anesthetics to ship building to philosophy to even folk wisdom everything is our ancestors recorded in these manuscripts so it was a great challenge to put them together to survey to document to make a database and to and to uh, give conservation treatment to these manuscripts they are available i mean we made a database of, of more than 2 million that is 20 lakh manuscripts and still there are more and more and more manuscripts waiting to be discovered waiting to be documented put together so just imagine the challenge these are written in languages i mean so many languages and scripts in which people don't even many people don't even know how to read so it was again another challenge to make people understand scripts read these scripts so so many levels we had to work but the problem with this uh, mission was that because it was a publicly uh, uh, owned institution there were very few uh, the, the, there were constraints on how to give it out access was a problem though the database was available for people to see the digitized texts were not free for all this was one of the one of the incentives for us to start creating the sahapedia because we thought that if this knowledge is not locked up in these libraries and people are not able to use them researchers are not able to use them students are not able to use them what is the point in claiming that these are our great uh, assets and cultural heritage so we the first principle that we we started out when we started with the sahapedia is make knowledge free make knowledge accessible to everybody secondly go in for participation participation of all kinds in the sense i mean it can have any kind of participation and uh, uh, what we wanted to avoid is monocultures of the mind we cannot have a single mind we cannot have a single minded window it has to have take diversity it has to take many levels of engagement so this perhaps goes for creation of a just society a true society and in which everyone enjoys the fruit of uh, our culture uh, or what we call as our common culture or i would put it in the uh, in the plural as cultures not just culture because cultures are many i mean each of us have culture we we bear with us our culture and we have a special special feeling towards our heritage and that is what we wanted to foster through this now coming to sahapedia itself there are like i said there are many institutions who engage with our, our there is ncpa for example there is a national this is the national center for performing arts there is the sangeet natak academy there are universities slowly we are building up a kind of corpus of uh, and, and a network of institutions and a corpus of knowledge ideas not in many ways i mean in multiple ways for the engagement of all and for the consumption of all this is i mean uh, uh, this i think is a core of what i wanted to say and i would like to end this by citing uh, ms subalakshmi's uh, mellifluous music uh, which many of you may have heard it is when she was at the un she uh, she she uh, sang it for the un during uh, the un general assembly years back but it is still uh, i think i think very 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 resonant in all our it is called maitrim bhajata my uh, which means that you uh, practice friendship towards everybody and also not have um, uh, and and treat others as you would like to be treated by, by them to you so give respect 
and then you expect that you give take respect from people so this i think is perhaps the core and essence of culture and what it can do to a just society you bring you give equal status to people you give respect to people you take your respect so this is the essence of what i wanted to say and what we strive towards through sahapedia and this is an invitation for everybody and all of you here and also many other people to come and join us in this initiative and give us and support us in creating this as a global platform on india and india's culture thank you so much